are you satisfied with your understanding of sustainability? If you are not, imagine a journey together, a pluralistic one, with academia, innovators, startups, NGOs, all looking for solutions to the greatest challenge of our time. My name is Samuele Tini, and this is the Sustainability Journey. Welcome to another episode. Today, we are discussing how software can save the world and which is the role of the new technology for our climate crisis. And we do it with an amazing startup, somebody that is uh, designing and preparing software in Africa, India, all over the world. We do it with Matthew Francois, the CEO and founder of Antarctica Global. Thank you so much, Matthew, for being here. Thank you, Samuel. Happy to be here. Matthew, I know everybody will buy Antarctica mm, software. I mean, everybody will ask why. But before that, our question, how you have become a change maker in the sustainability uh, space? I don't know if I'm a change maker, but I, I'm doing my bit. I go a lot by the, uh, the legend of the hummingbird, where you have to do your bit in the forest to extinguish the fire. So, I mean, this has been a journey, I guess, of my entire life, more to begin with at a personal level before being something professional. I've always been a nature lover. I've been doing a lot of expeditions in my life, solo expeditions where I cross, uh, you know, mountains, deserts, jungles. And um, some years ago, I would say about 10 years ago, I came to India. That's where I have been for the past 10 years. And that's where the real journey began of trying to build an ecosystem of well, many projects and actions that would sort of like contribute to changing the situation that we are in today. That's how Antarctica came to, uh, to creation. Yeah. Thank you, Matthew. And you, as you said, you, you arrive in India and you start Antarctica. Can you discuss a bit how can software, you know, save the planet? We might think planting trees or doing other, but software, it might be a bit difficult to understand. And then from there, the, the big question, why Antarctica? Why, why, why this name and why you are using this? Climate change today is something that, that um, I would say touches everyone and where everything is to be done on every aspect of our societies. We are taking climate change from the angle of technology and specifically software because we do see a lot of aspects that can sort of, you know, contribute to accelerating the transition towards a decarbonized society. In fact, software is probably the greatest accelerator that we have today at hand to change the societies, every aspect of our societies, whether, I mean, in the agriculture, in the transportation, in the uh, health aspects. I mean, every aspect is uh, sort of something where software can play a major role. So that's where we have been sort of focusing on. And somehow it's also where one of, it's one of our industries, which sort of claims a lot of like great uh, innovations and great things, claims a lot of innovation, but where I do personally believe that there's a lot of hypocrisy in terms of how technology is being used today. Most of the technologies that are being used are actually not being used for the right purpose. They are being used today in Europe or America to buy dogs in nfts where you want to say that like technology actually could be applied to something way more concrete uh, where you see deforestation happening in the jungles where you see i mean land fires where you see that and i mean very close to where we are uh, in india i mean we, we have countless sort of use cases of why we need to focus our attention on the real subjects and so that's what we are trying to do with technology we are trying to be that bridge in the tech world to sort of offer solutions uh, to uh, well the, the problems that we are all facing. Thank you so much. And I'm sure we'll discuss that uh, on the impact stories than what we have done so far. And now, as I said, I anticipated before the big question, why Antarctica? How, why this name and which are, which is your mission, your view and, and your passions and your team? No, that, that's a great question. And there are many reasons for, for this name. One is that it's it's something very simple, is that that our actions, yours, mine, everyone's, actually is affecting Antarctica today. It's affecting Antarctica today because the glaciers are melting, because uh, the shores of Antarctica are being polluted by the plastic that we consume in our cities, uh, because the biodiversity has been dropping 
excessively over the past 50 years. I mean, I have many sort of examples to give you as to why we, both of us, are having an impact today on Antarctica, and which is the reason why I don't ever want to forget that that what we do every day must contribute not negatively, but rather positively to changing the situation, even for the penguins of Antarctica. But the second reason also is like more from a technical aspect is that technology as a whole thing, and, and, and especially software, is a bit like Antarctica, a bit like an iceberg, where there's a lot of what you don't see, which is happening below the water, and where we try to explain, I mean, we, we try to sort of like solve the complex problems linked to bringing technology into our you know everyday life uh, we, we see how complex it is to implement technology especially on projects linked to the decarbonization of our society and that's where we have tried to be that sort of stakeholder in the ecosystem where you can come and sort of like ask us how to help to implement such technologies that are going to contribute to sort of like accelerating the developments of your project. That's pretty much why Antarctica as a whole thing, there's many also analogies, but that would be the main two ones. I want to ask a bit more about your story, digging a bit deeper. Why have you established in India as fast? It might be you're a Frenchman, but in India, why? And how are you using uh, the, your location in the emerging market also as a, as a pivot to, to work in this uh, problem of, of climate change. I actually came initially for three weeks in India and I ended up like just staying and, and every year there would be new adventures, new people. Like I, I remember one person in my very first flight to India, it was a Sikh man, you know, one of the person with a turban on his head and, and, and we were sitting together next to that, uh, like in, in that flight and, and we discussed and the man told me, and I recall very well, you will never leave India. And I asked him, but why? He's like, you will get many people who will try to screw you or like to uh, to steal from you, but you will meet some gems. And those people will be those that will actually make you stay in the country. And somehow it happened to be true. I've met uh, countless incredible people in this, uh, in this country. Uh, some of them are the people that I work with together, my co-founder or like the people that, that I've like built this uh, company with. Um, and this is the, the the reason why I'm still here today, I guess. Those are the, the friends that I've met in the country. And then, I mean, it's I've not done just Antarctica over the past 10 years. We have done many things. I mean, I, I've, again, like uh, invested in many startups as well in the, in the country, in the transportation sector, for instance. I mean, where there's a lot of uh, big challenges that, that needs to be uh, addressed in the, in the country. And where Antarctica is, uh, again, something that made way more sense uh, to be created in India than anywhere else. I mean, India is a concentration of all the challenges that we see today with climate change. Just to give you an idea, I mean, 23 out of the 30 most polluted cities in the world are in India. And in India, I mean, a city like Mumbai or Delhi or Chennai, I mean, those are cities where it's becoming very difficult to live the consequences of climate change. And therefore, I mean, that, that's where also I see it with the people who join us in our mission every day, in our team, for instance. I mean, those are questions that we even ask in the, uh, you know, the, the, the sort of interviews that we have with candidates. I mean, the, those are the kind of, of subjects that, that raise uh, from everyone in the country, from everywhere in the country also, and where I see that we made the right decision to set our operations there in the first place. And thank you so much. I can see the future and really how the emerging economy can be. You know, it is facing the problem and it can also bring the solutions. And I want to talk a bit of the solution. We will discuss, we have preempted it a bit, but I'm sure people, they want to understand some of the stories and the impact story that you have done, some case study. How have you used software and technology you have told us you are a bridge, the tech world to offer a solution. How you have offered a solution to people? Yeah, that's, a, that's again a great question. And I'm always happy to see that every day we like try to actually help projects that are very virtuous uh, to the planet and where we see how technology has a measurable impact on their capacity to scale. Because in a world where you have to decarbonize our societies, 
well, you need to push today the projects that are sometimes very small and which are competing against the old legacy of like fossil fuel based companies and where you need to sort of like give them that, that boost, that accelerator, which technology does. And where data, for instance, plays a major role also where accumulation of data and the usage of that data can sort of help uh, in that endeavor. So just to give you a, a few examples, I mean, I mentioned like agriculture or transportation as uh, two, uh, for example, major aspects of how we can decarbonize a society. I'll just give you, so the, those two use cases I have in mind at the moment, uh, we have worked with a company that is an urban farm. What they do is basically, they do, uh, problem with agriculture is that you have less and less lands that you can actually uh, cultivate and you have more and more people on the planet. And therefore, I mean, along with traditional agriculture, we have what we call the urban agriculture, something which is more technology oriented because you basically reproduce the conditions of life in like old parkings or like, you know, uh, closed uh, places and where you have to connect basically a lot of sensors, like humidity sensors, temperature sensors, uh, all kinds of sensors basically, to recreate those conditions where you're gonna be able to say, okay, at 3 p.m., I want five drops of water on my tomato and I wanna make sure that there's 80% humidity. And you're gonna test progressively the things so that you increase the productivity per square meter or per square feet basically. And we happen to realize that like today with uh, this farm, for instance, they can do 216 times more productive uh, harvest than in traditional agriculture. What it does is that you are able tomorrow to feed populations in metropolitan cities, especially, and especially in the emerging countries. I mean, in a city like Mumbai, for example, where most of the food is being imported, you need to have that capacity to feed the people with food that's coming from very close to where you are. This is also how you avoid transportation from very far away. Like usually, I mean, in every cities around the world, you are importing a lot of your food, etc. That's um, a concept which today is applying to the real world where technology here plays a major role because you need to be able, one, to connect those sensors, to collect that data, to manage, to track, to sort of be able to say, okay, like this is how my plant has been growing. This is how I make sure that this has all the nutrients. This is how you also make sure that you can scale your operations to have bigger farms with, you know, like uh, less actions to be ex executed. So that's where technology can play a huge role in, in the agriculture. I mean, that's one uh, example of, of it. On the transportation sector, for instance, we work with a, a company in, uh, in Africa, in Kenya, especially in Nairobi. These guys are trying to, well, again, make the change towards a decarbonized society by uh, bringing in electric vehicles and especially electric bikes on the roads of Nairobi. And where today that's also a huge, I mean, subject for those uh, major cities where you have a lot of pollution coming from the traffic. Now, what they do is that they have a bunch of bikes spread everywhere in the city and they have what they call these swapping stations where you come with your electric bike, you swap your batteries, you take a new one and you just bounce on your journey. Now, for that, you definitely need technology to sort of be able to track and manage your fleet and manage your batteries and be able at any point of time to say, okay, my batteries are there, my fleet, like, you know, my bikes are over there and I want to be able to sort of like maximize or optimize the way my assets are being disposed. And all this data that you are going to be able to collect is going to be able to sort of make your decisions wiser in terms of, well, uh, consumption of uh, electricity of like many aspects basically of, uh, of of the operations of the company. And that's definitely, uh, uh, again, a place where technology plays that role of scalability for the operations and where we have seen the results with those guys where, I mean, again, you are trying to replace fossil fuel based uh, vehicles. And that's again, an emergency today in our societies where you just need to do that ASAP, right? Wonderful examples. I'm really interested also to see the practical impact of technology, especially being closer to me, the transportation and the work and how we can solve the issue of traffic and pollution in, in our megalopolis like Nairobi, where, of course, electrification of transport is a crucial, a crucial solution. And I want to ask, how... Can we use uh, software in, in, in a responsible way, in a wisely way? Uh, what is your 
experience with Antari? How, how can be software a real agent of change? That's a great question. And I mentioned one example earlier in this conversation. I just don't buy any dogs in NFT. Uh, rather adopt a dog from the from a street, you know, and, but, but don't buy a, a dog that's on an NFT. That's pure consumption of carbon, which is pointless, like which is actually something that does not contribute positively to the earth. And if it does not contribute positively, it does contribute negatively. So you always have, and I think that's the important, and that's how I see, uh, like, even the decisions I make every day in terms of who I'm helping or who I'm not is, I'm just wondering, is this company or this project or this aspect, like, doing something good for the earth? Is it something that's contributing positively to the earth? That's why we have encompassed into the, what we call the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, which are quite large. Right. So now as an advice, I always say that that just do the things that are that are virtuous. Even from a software perspective, there are many software that are extremely important today. Uh, right now, internally in our company, we are working on a software which it's an API. So it's a bridge basically to indicate the consumption of your like the carbon footprint of your usage of a software. Because I find it crazy today that it's very easy to know the carbon footprint of a tomato or a piece of meat, but it's very difficult to know the carbon footprint that you have in using, for example, Zoom, this conversation that we are having. I would love to know, you know, the kind of uh, carbon footprint that this is emitting. And it's not as uh, sort of like widely uh, known and it's rather scientific today uh, at the moment. So. That's where we need to sort of raise the awareness of uh, that kind of, of impact that we are having with software. So till then, I mean, for the grand public, I would say that like be mindful of how you are using software. Be mindful of how you are using technology as a, as a thing. And that's already uh, the, the first step towards taking action. When you know you do, that's the case with aviation, when you know you reduce your, uh, you know, flights, uh, that's the case with also like like consumption of meat, for example, which is a huge factor of, of uh, increasing carbon emissions. And when you know you reduce, that's the same with software, I would say, and with technology overall, when you know you do, therefore, uh, be mindful of uh, your actions. And thank you for the tips. And I think these are the actionable tips that we, everybody, even when listening, maybe not a tech person like me, we can do and use. I want to ask you a forward thinking question. Where do you want to take Antarctica? Which which is you you have given up as nip tip on one development. Can you give us a bit of your vision for the next maybe five years or ten years? Where do you want to take it? That's where the dreams come into the discussion. And I'm I'm a, I'm I'm a big dreamer by nature and I try to be realistic also in terms of those dreams. So I, I go step by step. But what I do today with my team is to build a very strong community of people who want to contribute positively to the earth. It starts with the people who are joining our team and where we know that we are sort of like uh, linked by this mission together of helping the virtuous projects. But tomorrow it's a, a community of, of like uh, developers, of like CTOs, of like CEOs of many companies which want, uh, who want to make a change through uh, the tech world uh, in technology. And I sort of be that bridge, that virtuous bridge of like stakeholders that are in this ecosystem of like people who want to find solutions and, and who need technology to sort of, um, you know, like accelerate their projects. I'm, I'm more, ha- more than happy to, to, to do that and to be just a, a reference in that, in, in that sector. That will be already quite a, a task at hand. And I'm sure, I mean, your work and your vision and especially your contribution in the emerging market as the examples you are giving, especially the one in Nairobi and your work in India are really giving a contribution in the work and showing also how the emerging markets and the emerging country are the one that are leading the, the transformation. I want to ask, you are really giving us some tips and some and how we can get in the work. I want to ask you a bit about your final message to the people, somebody that is listening to us, what we can do, what is what Matthew wants to, to convey to the people that are listening to us all over the world. Be a, a hummingbird. I, I said that in the beginning, but I, this is a, a, a great purpose of, of just doing your bit step by step. It is a hard like task, you know, overall, like to be 
part of those people who try to change the society that we are in, we face countless challenges. And all the people who are listening to you uh, and to your podcast, I'm sure that they are facing challenges every day in terms of like trying to convince about the reasons why we all fight against climate change, uh, because that's a huge mountain in front of us. So I guess go step by step. Don't discourage yourself and surround yourself with the right people, with the community around you. I'm happy, you know, to sort of always, and I do that every day in India, for instance, of, of meeting people who are questioning themselves about what to do, how they sort of can contribute, whether personally or professionally. And I guess that 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 what sort of like binds us all together to keep that motivation going about like, you know, every day, like listening to the bad news of the earth and things that are happening. Well, it's that we all are in the same boat. We all try to empower ourselves with the motivations from each other and, and step by step we're going to get there i'm sure and thank you so much matthew and i'm sure we will discuss and see maybe in the future and maybe in one year or two year time where you are planning and to listen even to even more of your impact stories and case studies so thank you so much for having been here on the podcast and it was a real pleasure and honor thank you thank you so much samuel it was my pleasure also are you satisfied after this wonderful episode? Let's continue together our sustainability journey.